The character creation process has changed with the full launch of Baldur's Gate 3. Now that I've played over 30 hours of the full game, I wanted to cover these mistakes that you can make in the character creation and just generally things that you should know about before you jump into the full game, as there is a lot of choice to make here that you definitely need to be aware of. So let's go. Let me know in the comments who you're role-playing as. Race, class, backstory. Honestly, tell me everything as it's my favorite thing to do in these comments of my videos is read what sort of characters people are playing as and it's really exciting to see. So the very first decision you'll make is are you playing as an origin character or a custom character? And this is pretty important because the origin characters make a lot of choices for you in that their race, sub-race and their class as well as their background are all defined for you. You don't actually get to make these decisions. Now this is a good thing if you are new to to D&D or to any of Larian Studios isometric RPGs in that it makes that initial decision process a little bit easier for you. They will also come with a background in that you can learn about what their past is and things that will bring up that will definitely happen during the story as these decisions sort of come about themselves. But it is dependent on whether you want that sort of story told to you in that way or whether you want to make a completely custom character. Now, I would suggest to make a custom character if you do want to sort of imprint your own view of the game whether that be role playing as your own character or imprinting your own thoughts and feelings so if you're going to choose a custom character you can then pick all of these options yourself and really imprint your own views onto the world the one exception to this is the dark urge in that you can define their race as well as their class into how you like now this can be a mistake if you do choose the dark urge and it's not something they actually want to do because this is definitely a very easy evil origin and if you don't want to I guess play as a very somewhere I'm trying to avoid saying too much about this based on my experience with the dark urge but you will have a constant urge of wanting to cause violence and mayhem and maybe you don't want to do that maybe you want to give into those urges maybe you don't but it can sometimes be restrictive if you know you're just trying to have a grand old time and your character is constantly thinking about murdering people and blood so it's just definitely something to think about if that's not the direction that you want to go but let's just assume that you're going custom here because you want to make your own hero or villain or something in the middle for that purpose here your race choice is just as important as in the early access, but for different reasons. So in the early access, all the races ability score modifiers were tied to the race. Whereas now you can actually customize these based on the choice that you want to make yourself. So this gives you the freedom to pick a race based on the looks, if you want to choose a race that way, but also based on either the racial features or the role play, which I think are the two main things to consider because some of the races, especially let's say the Githyanki will have a much different role playing experience because not a lot of people like Githyanki, but also, if you come across Gith Yankee, they will act differently towards you in the game. So it's definitely a big thing to consider. But if you're thinking about it more from a min-maxing perspective, the main thing to consider here with these racial features is the movement speed. So some of these classes, things like the smaller classes, like say the halflings, the dwarves, and the gnomes, have a lower racial movement speed. Now what this means is if they're playing a melee class, like this example here with a barbarian, they will be able to travel a shorter distance. And because you need to get into that melee range to attack enemies, it'll be harder for you to get there. There are ways you can do this like it's not an end of the world thing but it's just something to consider if you're considering some sort of a min max by focusing on those aspects another way is to think about if you're playing as a ranged character whether that be some sort of a rogue or potentially a ranger depending on the options there but if you're looking at say this option dark vision is something to consider because in lots of areas in the game and i mean like like lots more areas than in the early access there is plenty of dark areas where having characters that have dark vision is so valuable because they can actually see in the dark you don't have to cast a light just so you can actually have a higher chance of hitting enemies which definitely occurs throughout the experience in the game so paying attention to say either the elf tiefling drow dwarf half elf or half orc are the main ones to consider here because these are the the races that actually have dark vision. So these are the ones that you want to think about if you're looking at some sort of a ranged option and you want to have dark vision, which definitely makes a difference. But there are other racial features that these classes have if those are the options that you choose to. But picking an option here based on looks or something like that is absolutely something you can do as well. 
The next decision you'll make is a class. Now, all 12 classes are available now, including the Monk. And if you want a full breakdown of the classes, I would highly recommend to check out my classes breakdown video. But just at a high level, it's really up to you what you want to pick here. But as sort of generally very broad strokes here, do you like magic? Then potentially go something like the Wizard, the Warlock, or the Sorcerer. Do you like Millie? Then the Barbarian, the Fighter, and the Monk are probably for you. Do you like supporting your team? Well, the Paladin, the Druid, the Cleric, and the Bard definitely fit that sort of a bracket. But do you just straight up like animals? Then definitely the Druid is for you. Once you've picked your class, the next will be a couple of different choices. Depending on the option here, you'll get some either cantrips or spells or subclass that you'll need to choose from. Now, this is an important decision, but I wouldn't worry too much about making the wrong choice here, as you can always respec your class, you can remake these decisions, and the default options aren't actually that bad either, so it's not too bad. But one thing that I will mention here that is definitely a mistake that you can run into is if you choose the Paladin class. Now, Paladins are a little different in that their subclass classes are oaths that they have sworn and those oaths are actually tied to some of the role-playing aspects of a paladin so to sort of simplify this right if you're playing as an oath of the ancients you have these tenets that you have to abide by so you need to show acts of kindness you need to show love to people and you need to like bring that sort of forward same as in devotion you need to show courage and compassion and duty or if you choose vengeance then you may want to show a little bit of evil towards you and and you know potentially have some sort of wickedness in the world but those oaths are actually important because if you break those oaths you'll get a fourth subclass called the oath breaker which will then change your subclass option so say if you wanted to play as a good paladin and you know you really like healing radius or something and you make that choice and then you break your oath that will change your subclass features which will then in turn change some aspects of your subclass and your class and the way it plays in general which which maybe you didn't actually want to happen. So it's just something that worth mentioning as it definitely affects the role play for the Paladin specifically, but some of the other classes are much more freedom based around that. Like you don't have to follow these directions. And my main that I'm playing as right now is a Paladin. So I've definitely been sort of stuck in some of those restrictions where I'm sort of in the game right now. Your background will come into play occasionally in dialogue, but it's mostly important in two specific things, skills and inspiration points. The first being inspiration points. Now, in Inspiration points are earned by performing actions in the game that align with your background. So for example, say if you are a soldier and you're fighting with a bunch of allies and all the allies survive, you might get an inspiration point for no one left behind. And those inspiration points can then later be used to re-roll dice. So if you fail like a specific skill check, you can then use that inspiration point to then say potentially pass that dialogue or skill check because you get a chance to re-roll that dice. But the skills is definitely one of the important aspects as well and because there are hundreds of skill checks in the game like literally hundreds skills will become a huge factor so the skill aspect of the background definitely matters but you will also get to pick some skills based on different decisions as well now every skill in the game has skill checks that you will need to pass or potentially fail if you do fail them based on different things that happen in the game now just some general things to consider you want to focus on skills that are relevant to whatever your primary stat or ability point is so depending on what that is, say in this example, if we are a rogue, then our primary stat is dexterity. We want to lean into the dexterity based skills because we get additional modifiers for them, not only because we are proficient in that skill, so we get benefits for that, but also because our dexterity is so high that gets added to any of those checks as well. So you definitely want to specialize in that way, but there is options depending on what sort of a class or subclass you pick or on even your background if you want to focus on other things. Some general things to consider is if you want to be a character that talks a lot and wants to sort of immerse themselves in the charismatic aspects of the game then picking say something like a bard that has charisma as their primary stat and then focusing on those charisma stats like persuasion performance intimidation and deception is an option to go say if you want to be super sneaky and steal a bunch of things and maybe do some sort of nefarious actions then say a rogue with dexterity as their primary stat for things like atrobacks sleight of hand stealth uh, potentially an option that you may want to go if you want to interact with things in the world like move things around Around, then a character that focuses on strength say like the barbarian and then you can have something like the athletic skill but for the most part strength will just sort of either impact the athletic skill or just moving things in the world which you will do sometimes for certain puzzles you might have to move things around 
If you want to find a lot of hidden things in the world, like hidden caches, or say be very perceptive about things that may happen, like hidden buttons, things like that, then something like a cleric, which is main stat is wisdom, may be the option for you for skills like survival, perception, medicine, insight, animal handling, as could be the option that you do pick. If you want to know more about the law or essentially just be like significantly smarter than everyone else, which does also, again, like all of these options in my experience have played a part, like actually understanding different characters, things in the law will definitely play a role. Then you may want to pick a class that focuses on intelligence like the wizard and then focus on those skills, arcana, history, investigation, nature, and religion may be the option that you do choose. But also remember that you've got three other members of your party that you can specialize in the skills that you don't actually cover. So you've got that option as well. Well, if you're just honestly not sure, but you want to just pass every single skill check in the game, the Bard is probably the best option because they have a wide breadth of skills that they can learn because they get extra skills as they do level up. But also they get Jack of all trades, which adds half of their proficiency bonus to any skill checks that they do have to try and pass. And the final option that you'll choose is your ability points. Now, this is definitely an important decision, but you do get to assign those bonuses. So something that I will mention here is depending on the options you pick, it's important to try and get all of your abilities to be a even number. Why this is important is because you don't actually gain benefits from a stat being on an odd number. For example, here, if our constitution is on 13, our overall HP is still 14, and we're not actually gaining anything from it. Whereas if we go to 14, it also increases all of those aspects and our health is now 15. So having everything on a positive number is the main thing you should try and focus on. It's not you know, the, the biggest deal if you don't actually get that, but it's just something to think about as you're trying to either apply these points and then apply these modifiers. Obviously focus on whichever one has the star as that's your primary ability, but some classes like the Paladin may actually have a spell casting modifier that's different to whatever their primary stat is, right? As a Paladin, you wanna be swinging a melee weapon, so your strength is important, but their spell casting modifier is charisma so you definitely want to be have a high amount of charisma as a paladin so just make sure that you check what your class's spell casting modifier is as it'll either be intelligence wisdom or charisma and make sure that you've applied that depending on your class option as well as thinking about dexterity because that is linked to your armor class but otherwise just using the recommended you can't go wrong with as it will definitely point you in the right direction for whatever your class's general specifics are but that is everything you need to know about the character creation let me know your thoughts in the comments down below thank you guys for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is Norza, and i hope you have a great day